Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, I tell you, I'm so excited to be with you again today on this Sunday morning, another day that the Lord has made. Let me just tell you, I got so many calls and texts and emails last week about how everyone enjoyed not only the message, but they enjoyed the choir, you know, uh, in fact, they enjoyed it so much till this week, even though we're not supposed to gather together, I went to choir rehearsal. And before I bring the message, I'm going to uh, go and sing with the choir. Now, I also need to let you know that I was able to bring someone on board to do the taping of this message. That is none other than Sister Elaine Hill. So let's give her a hand. Thank you, baby, for uh, going on to film this. Now, there is a mighty word from the Lord, but before we get into that, I want to remind those, so many people were calling asking, how do I give my tithes and offering? There's a link on the website. If you have any questions, just call Sister Elma Bryan and she'll be happy to assist you with your tithes and offerings because when all of this is over, we still want to have a place where we can go and worship the Lord. And I want to thank you, all of those that have already sent in their tithes and offerings. These are tough times, but God said he will supply your every need. Now, before we get into the word, let's hear from the choir. I'm going to the choir stand. I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose. I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose. Yeah. I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord to take care of me. I know the Lord by me. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. God bless you, choir. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, boy, I tell you, singing is really, really hard. Singing with the Mass Choir. I want to thank the Mass Choir for such a beautiful rendition. Uh, really was inspiring, and I know that you were really motivated, and I'm just trying to catch my breath. Woo! <clears throat> but there is a word from the Lord, I'm telling you. So let us pray right now. Our Father God, we pray that you would bless the word in a special way. Lord, give power to your word. Let us hear from thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, hopefully you got your Bibles and ready to go. There is a mighty word from the Lord. It comes from 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verses 12 through uh, 14. <clears throat> That's 2 Chronicles, verses 12 through 14. Please get your Bibles. This is a great word <clears throat> uh, out of the book of Chronicles. <clears throat> and it reads, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. <clears throat> I want to talk from the 13th and the 14th verse, and I want to use the very first word of each verse for a subject. I want to talk about if. If. That's all I want to talk about. If. <clears throat> As we know today, <clears throat> excuse me, the we're all captivated by the coronavirus, uh, and some are calling it uh, Corona-19 virus, and there doesn't seem to be an answer anywhere. And the worst is still yet to come. And I've been asked over and over again, preacher, did this come from God, or did God allow this? Well, I think the answer is in this particular whole chapter. Now, to give you a little background of what's going on, Solomon had just finished building the Lord's temple, and it was magnificent in every way. But before they went into the temple, what they did is they brought sacrifices unto the Lord. <clears throat> and, and some people ask, does God, since he has everything, why does he require our tithes and offering? He does because it was his to begin with. And if you really want to be blessed by the Lord, oh, have mercy today, then give, make a sacrifice unto the Lord. Oftentimes we want to give him what we think we can afford to give him. But don't you know that God is looking at us and it isn't how much you give, it's the spirit in which you give. And I'm a witness that the more you give, the more he gives back to you. It's just not a song. So <clears throat> Solomon and all of the people, they gave burnt offerings and, and offered all that they could unto the Lord as a sacrifice to him before they entered into the temple. And God came down with fire and, and burnt up all of the offering and, and what they started to do is everybody had a place of worship and I was thinking about Shiloh and every church before we go back to worship when God blesses us maybe we ought to get together 
on the outside and praise God before we go on the inside that God may be woo, in the inside of the church building because I'm going to tell you something. Church ain't church without the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I know I got a witness. And let me just tell you, go on and say amen while we're going through this message. So Solomon here, <coughs> uh, he gave offering and all of the people willfully gave offering and the presence of the Lord filled the temple and there was music playing and rejoicing as they went inside the temple. Let me tell you something, it's a sacred place when you go inside of the house of God. That's where you expect to meet and feel the presence of the Lord. The song said, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is, let me tell you something. I felt the presence of the Lord in the Lord's house. In fact, it was in the Lord's house that I received the Holy Ghost. So let me tell you something, every chance you get, get into, go to the house of the Lord. Sometimes you wanna be at home and do bedside Baptist. No, no, that ain't good enough. Sometimes, quite frankly, you just too lazy to get up and go to the house of the Lord. And then other times, <clears throat> you got other excuses. Now, am I fussing? Yeah, I'm fussing a little bit, but I'm doing it to try to help you get to the Lord's house. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us, us, all of us, everybody ought to go, everybody in your house, get them up, get them up. I don't care, children, if you at the house, you need to be come to the house of the Lord. Well, Reverend Hill, you in my house, you need to stay in your house. That's all right. So, so, so here they did, and, and they went into the house, and they began in the Lord's house. They began to praise the Lord, and the musicians began to play on the string instruments, and, and I imagine they beat on something like the drums in order to praise the Lord. And you talk about singing and praising the Lord. Oh, 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 they were really praising the Lord. You talk about the praise team leaders leading the congregation. Oh, I tell you, it was a mighty time. And it says here in our text, in verse number 12, it says, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Don't you know that everything you do the Lord sees us. Everything you think, he already thinks and knows what you're about to think. So here the Lord <coughs> appeared unto Solomon by night. And notice here it said, and said unto him, don't you know God will speak to you? Oh, in a midnight hour. And he said unto them, notice what God said to Solomon. <coughs> he said, I have heard thy prayer. Let me tell you, folks, brothers and sisters, when you pray, God hears your prayer. And, and that's why Jesus said, man ought to always pray. Let me tell you something. When I pray, I know God hears my prayer. And there's some praying folks at the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. Sister Alma Davis will tell you in a minute that she's a prayer warrior. And some of the other folks there that are praying, the deacons and, and choir members and members and preachers, they all pray. And let me just tell you this, while I'm talking about it, that prayer does change things. And oh, I feel like preaching up in here, so I may just go on and preach. Ain't got but one person to say amen. That'd be Sister Hill. And if she say amen or not, I still will preach up in here because I feel the presence of the Lord. So it says here that I have heard thy prayer. God hears our prayer. God knows what we want. When we pray and say, our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When we ask him, Lord, won't you heal my body? Don't you know that he's able to heal your body? So he's, he says to Solomon that I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Now, God is making it personal. Uh, Sometimes we think that God is a far off, but no, no, he's ever present at the same time. And now look what God says in verse number 13. He says, if 
<clears throat> I shut up heaven and that there be no more rain. God is saying, if, if, if I do this, what I'm going to do. And that's why I chose the text of if. He says, if I shut up heaven and there be no more rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. This is God talking. Or if I send pestilence among my people. That word pestilence is the same as an epidemic. So God is here saying that if I do these things. So the question becomes, did God send this particular virus? Uh, I don't know, but according to this scripture, he's saying that he can do it. I also know that it's by his permissive will. Now let's just stop and look at this virus itself. Number one, there is no cure. So this self, self-containment that we're having, this uh, self-homework, whatever it is that they call and stay at home in place, that's what people are trying to find a way not to catch it. But let me just tell you this, unless God blesses us with a cure, it may wipe out most of the population. We don't know. And the numbers are staggering. We don't know where it came from. We don't know how you catch it. And we sure can't get rid of it on our own. So the, here it says that if I send a pestilence among my people, meaning an epidemic. So Reverend Hill, what are we going to do about this particular uh, epidemic that's spreading? And then it goes on to the next verse. And notice what it says here. God is saying, if, Lord have mercy, if, if my people, which are called by my name, he's talking about the church. I'm, you know, we've got all of the things that the politicians and leaders are saying. They're saying uh, social distancing. They're saying uh, wipe off all of your surfaces. They're saying stay at home. But what they're not saying is they're not saying let us pray. Let me tell you something. Ain't nobody saying let's call on God. Don't you know God is the only one that's got the answer. Oh, I feel like preaching up in here. God has got the answer. When will our leaders come together and say, let's pray? If this nation was to come together and pray, don't you know that God is a very present help in the time of trouble? But notice here, God is not saying that everybody got to pray. What he's saying here is just my people, just the believers, my people, those that belong to to the Lord, and I wonder, is there anybody here that belong to the Lord? Well, he says, if my people, uh, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and do what? And pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will fear fear and will heal the land. So God is saying that if just my people, just a few of my people, and I remember when God was going to destroy all of mankind during the time of Abraham, when he was going to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham said, God, if I can find 50 praying men, will you let the city stand? And God said, yeah, if you can find 50 men, but uh, he couldn't find 50. So he said, if I find 40, and then he went down to 30, and then he went down to 20, and then he went down to 10. Well, I'm asking and wondering, is there anybody out there that will pray with me that God will heal the land? I don't know how many is out there, but I believe there's somebody, and it's all right to say amen. It's all right to clap your hands. Is there somebody who will pray with me and ask God to heal the land? He said, if my people, which are called by my name, let me tell you something, said, shall humble themselves and pray. 
Let me tell you something, it's time for a prayer meeting all over the land. It's time the churches get together and pray that God will heal the land. Don't you know that God is not happy with the stuff that's going on and that's why he shut down everything. He shut down the church because half folks wasn't going to church anyway. Uh, I hear the phone ringing. It's probably President Trump trying to call me right now because I'm starting some stuff. But I'll call the White House and tell them that uh, they need to look to the lighthouse. Uh, do I have a witness here? So he said, if my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and then it says, and turn from your wicked ways. Then, he says, will I hear from heaven? In other words, God is in heaven, but he's saying that I'm everywhere and that I'll hear your prayer. Let me tell you something, it's time to pray. Do I have anybody here that'll help me pray? Now, notice I kept talking about if. If means we got to do something in order for God to do something. If means we got to get up and start calling on his name in order for him to bless you. Let me tell you something. I've been in situations where I didn't know the answer, but I 